What's up guys, it's Mackie Ninja here and I got another great Path of Exile build for you. I'm going to walk you through my Hexablast Saboteur build from start to finish so that way you guys can get rolling in the new league Trial of the Ancestors. And if you guys can make sure to hit that subscribe button and help me push this video to get a thousand views, that would greatly help out this channel. Now the Hexablast build is not a very difficult build in general. I mean it's as far as budget and as far as mapping, defense, it's all pretty average across the board. Where it truly excels is at bossing. When you get this build completely put together it absolutely rips apart bosses and crushes them. For those who are unfamiliar with what Hexablast is, it is a high damage chaos spell that deals 100% more damage when you hit a cursed enemy. And this would mean that having cursed on hit rings is going to be a must have, and a good example of this is the end game ring. What makes Hexablast truly unique is although it deals chaos damage, when it comes to the calculations, it takes the lowest resistance that enemy has to calculate its damage. Now this is highly advantageous and should be taken advantage of when using curses and exposures to reduce that one single elemental resistance. And that's why skill gems like flammability and frostbite are so valuable in this build. Also keep in mind that hexablast can ignite, shock, and freeze. That means when critical strikes occur, they can cause all these ailments simultaneously. Now me personally, I prefer the freeze route because it adds an additional layer of defense. Now, one of the downsides of Hexablast is it has a low critical strike chance, 4%. Now, this can be offset by using the increased critical strike gem and then later change to the Sandstorm Visage, which then really helps uh, take this build to the next level. Now, when it comes to leveling, as I mentioned before, without a curse on hit ring, the Hexablast build just doesn't work. So that's why initially you're going to start off leveling with Storm Blast Mine in conjunction with Orbs of Storms. Now, by the end of Act 2, when you pick up the Herald of Thunder and Summon Scare Bots, this build really starts taking form. You can really start seeing the damage being pumped out. And once you hit level 28, you want to pivot from the Storm Blast Mine to the Pyro Class Mine. Now, this is for two reasons. One being that it provides better base damage, and two being that it provides better AoE damage. And lastly, you need to pivot from Orbs of Storms to Flammability, as well as pick up Wave of Conviction. Now you're going to add these two skills to your rotation to further decrease the enemy's resistance to fire. Now you're going to use these gems all the way until Act 6, where you'll make another large change to your gem list, such as shield charge and attaching faster attack support, linking flame ability, wave of conviction with Arcanus brand, and swapping out Herald of Thunder with Grace for more defense. Here is your skill tree for leveling, and here is my final skill tree. As far as gearing during the campaign, your main focus is to make sure that you have the gems that you want equipped, equipped. Especially once you pick up the Hexablast, make sure that you put in your offhand so that we can continue leveling while you're not using it. Once you have completed the campaign, then you want to use your resources, such as your Chaos Orbs, then purchase gear upgrades. And you want them to center around increasing your life, as well as increasing your resistances to make sure you hit that 75% cap. As well as continuing to get more socketed gear with more appropriate colored sockets for your gems. And so your final skill gems will be Hexablast, chained with Divergent Minefield Support, High Impact Mine Support, Charge Mind Support, Awaken Void Manipulation Support, and Trap and Mind Damage Support. And then with Shield Charge, you'll have Fast Attack Support, Momentum Support, and then you're going to have a Zealot Tree paired with Divine Blessing Support, Inspiration Support, and Increased Duration Support. You're going to have Wither combined with Spell Totem Support, Multi Totem Support, and then obviously the most important part is the ring that has curse on hit and, and preferably you have the unique one called profane proxy which has a socket on it which then you'll put elemental weakness lastly you'll have frost blink you'll still have bear trap grace and then you'll have immortal call paired with cast when damage taken support paired with increased duration support and then lastly you have summon scary bots and lastly, when it comes to flask, you want to have your Eternal Life Flask, your Quartz Flask, Quicksilver Flask, Amethyst Flask, and Jade Flask. 
and this is an example of what some endgame gear may look like. And I'll link down below my PoE planner showing the early game and late game build. Alright, if you guys enjoyed this video, leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the current league or if you've tried out this current build. And as always, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out my future Path of Alexa content. Until next time.